Napo Mahina, the days or nights of the month. And so that's the first thing we recognize that in English, they refer to the days of the month. In Hawaiian, we talk about the Po or the nights of the so-called month. So this is a literal translation. In really in traditional Hawaiian, the terminology for what we would call the phases of the moon or the nights of the moon actually is Kaulana Mahina which kind of gives you a little insight on how our kupuna looked at time. So it was not just the so-called phases or the shapes of the moon that's important, but in fact, in Hawaiian, it's going to this meaning, of course, of kaulana, which has to do with the positioning of the moon that we must always pay attention to that's been recorded and noticed. Now, the moon calendar always starts with the night of Hilo. And the word Hilo means something that's very thin, like a wisp. And that's, of course, this is when the moon is really at its skinniest form, right after Muku, which is the so-called new moon, when there is no moon. And the reason we must recognize why there is no moon on the nights of Muku is that the moon is really so close to the sun that you're not able to really see the moon. But as the moon moves in relation to the speed of the sun, one of the things we recognize is actually the sun moves across the horizon faster than the moon. So at the point after, on the first night, we always pay attention into kind of recognizing what does the word hilo actually mean also. Besides wisp, it's a wisp because if this is the horizon and uh, perhaps this is the hikina or the east and this is komohana or west, we of course always recognize like the sun and moon moving from east over to west is how the celestial bodies move. So when the sun is setting, when the sun is setting on the horizon, and we can take a, you know, kind of rough, maybe 6, 6 p.m. perhaps, make it kind of simple in regards to time. When the sun is setting, the Hilo moon really is the closest to the sun. And the first moon, you will always see, Hilo will always appear on just past sunset in the evening sky at its thinnest point following or near the so-called sun, the sunset. And what happens, just to kind of, uh, as we, we look at uh, numbers and formations, to remember that we think about the Hawaiian moon, it's not just the shape of Hilo being very thin, but also recognizing that Hilo is that first moon that appears on sunset very thin after sunset in the direction of sunset. And what happens each subsequent night, the moon will actually start to get a little bigger at sunset and start to get a little more farther in distance away from the so-called sun. Now, just to understand the mathematics of this, we also should recognize, right, the moon and sun move in a total circle. And actually, it's not really a circle, it's elliptical. But the idea that a circle, for example, has 360 degrees. There are so-called 30 nights or 30 so-called phases of the moon. So we can look at a quick calculation and we would recognize, of course, that that is roughly about 12 degrees per night. So when we think about the phases of the moon from sunset, it's roughly about 12 degrees difference each night that the moon will move above the sky. So roughly, we can figure out when we get to the total of, uh, but today we would call 90 degrees, yeah, it takes roughly about um, perhaps seven to maybe, maybe perhaps more like eight nights, eight to the night night that the half moon we call ole moons will uh, start to appear at sunset. In fact, will appear to be directly above. And that's what we call the half moons. We call ole. Okay. But the first few nights, yeah, hilo hoaka, and the word hoaka means crescent. And it's followed by the four ku nights. Yeah, kukahi, kulua, kukolu, one, two, three. And then, of course, kupau, or ku in totality. So let's continue looking at understanding the Kaulana Mahina.
we'll find, in fact, right here, after the four ku, now we'll have four ole nights. So quickly, we see we have hilo hoaka, one, two, and then you have four kus, and then four oles, which make up a total of 10 nights. Now, the 10 is important because in Hawaiian thinking, the kaulana mahina, the phases of the moon, actually there are 30 of them that are broken up into three sets of 10. So you can think in, in the Hawaiian sets of a week, yeah, we actually have what's called an anahulu. And the word anahulu comes from the Polynesian word like sefulu, anasefulu, which means 10. So we can break down what we call the kaulana mahina into these three week-like or anahulu 10-day periods. Now the first 10, which we just looked at, hilo hoaka, kukahi kulua, kukolu, kupau, ole kukahi, ole kulua, ole kukolu, ole pau. We also should recognize that that first week is called ho'onui which actually means to get bigger. And because this is when the moon is getting bigger each night as you see the moon at sunset specifically. It's important to think about how time is told. It also represents, right, if you think of 360, we have to move about 120 degrees. Yeah, so roughly 120 degrees. Yeah, we know 120 plus 120 plus 120 equals 360. So the first 10 days represents that moon movement at the horizon upon, of course, as I'm going to use the reference point, which is sunset. So if you think of sunset in the Komohana in the west, and we think of the first night Hilo, so at sunset, you know, roughly perhaps at 6 p.m., Hilo will be very low on the horizon, yeah, at, at dusk, right after sunset, you'll see it, and of course, it will set following the sun. And the next night, the second night, of course, another so-called 12 degrees, we're going to have Hoaka, which will be a little farther, but at the same time, a little bigger. And the second night, and of course, followed by the four ku, so ku kahi, again, a little more far, farther, another 12 degrees, but in fact, a little more bigger, and so forth. So what you see with each Subsequent night, the moon starts to get farther and farther away from the sun at sunset as the sun moves faster than the moon, and it starts to get larger and larger, hence the word ho'onui. That on the 10th night, 120 degrees later, yeah, ole pao will be something here, and in fact, it's, it will actually be a little more than a half moon. And that ends that first 10-day period called Ho'onui. Now, so after Ole Pao, we have another set of 10 nights. Yeah, and one of the things I kind of learned to remember that we have so-called these three first nights, Huna, which means to be hidden. And the way we can mark the moon also in phases is the word Huna means hidden. And as I was taught, it represents the idea that the corners of the moon, when you can kind of see the sharp corners, will disappear. And so on the night where the sharp corners disappear, that's probably a good guess. It's the night of Huna. And then you have Mohalu. And then, of course, the word Hua, which is also another key indicator. The word Hua, which means egg, is when the, sh the, the moon looks very much like an egg. It's not round yet, but it's becoming almost round. And then we have, in Hawaiian thinking, we have these four nights of the full moon. So in Hawaiian thinking, you have four full moon nights. Of course, the two that are most well-known, Mahina o Hoku and Mahina o Mahialani, when the moon, in fact, is very, very full and round. And, um, and sometimes it's very difficult to make out which is Hoku versus Mahialani because the moon is almost perfectly round. And one of the things you find in the moon at different times of the year, it actually gets rounder and smaller as the night progresses. It moves. But we have four of these. And then we have the three again. And you notice... A, a way to kind of represent la'au, which means, of course, like stick or tree. So these nights, huna, mohalu, hua, akua, hoku, mahelani, and kulua, la'au kukahi, la'au kulua, la'au pau, equal the second 10-day period. 
Now this, in fact, these nights, this 10 day period, we actually called Poi Poi. And Poi Poi means round. And that's because the moon is roundish. Think of the moon becoming very round, right? Started with Huna. You don't have any sharp edges. So that is, you recognize that Huna and Lao Kupao, these in fact are these opposites. So after Hoku and Mahialani, when a moon is perfectly round, it starts to get smaller. It starts to re return to this angular shape of, of the moon. So now one of the things to recognize, just to kind of draw this out, right? And this is again referring to sunset. So if you're thinking about the sun being on the western or the Komohana side, the, at sunset, and you can think of these other so-called 120 degrees, maybe something like that, which reference, of course, that second Anahulu, when the moon will be on the opposite end, right? The moon is on the opposite end of the sun. And in fact, though another way to mark a full moon, when the moon is perfectly round, of course, is that when it's in direct opposition to the sun. That's why it's a full moon. So one of the ways you can kind of tell Hoku and Mahalani is that on sunset, the full moon, of course, is always rising. I repeat, at sunset, the full moon is always rising. It's always opposite. Yeah. Um, and then as we pass the so-called full moon, the moon starts to get a little more oval in shape again. And then after that, at the end of the so-called period, one of the things you realize is that these moons, after the full moon, these moons here, are moons that are not visible at sunset. These are moons that will start to rise. They rise at night. And that's because, right, so if you think about a, a moon like Lao Kupao, which is a moon here, at sunset, it's actually quite a, a distance away from rising. And so it really doesn't rise until way late in the so-called evening, perhaps even like at 3 o'clock in the morning by the time it, it actually rises. So these are the beginning of the so-called dark nights. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go look at the, the last section. And when we look at the last section here of the last 10, is that, of course, uh, we know with Lao Pao, that ended the second Anahulu. Now, the third Anahulu actually means Emi. And Emi means to lessen or get smaller. Now, this is when the moon is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until Muku at the end here, where we have what you would say no moon or a new moon. And again, to remember, the reason why you have no moon on that night is that it's so close to the sun, you cannot really see the moon. So it's really moving along with the sun across the horizon in the day and, of course, at night. Now, in Emi, the thing to remember, it kind of reverses. Yeah, so we have three Oles again. So this is when we have, it's the opposite Ole. Yeah, so this is also when it's in a 45, sorry, when it's a 90 degree um, in front of the so-called sun. And then you have the three Kaloa, with reference, of course, the god Kanaloa. So you have three, three. And then you have the final four now, nights, sorry, Po, of the Kaolana Mahina, Kanelono, Mauli, and, and then Muku. Now, the thing to remember about these nights, again, just to kind of mark in time, so this is the third set of 10 nights. These are the nights in which, in fact, what you find is the moon is chasing the so-called sun. If you remember in the, sorry, the sun, in fact, sorry, the sun is chasing the moon. And yeah, so let's kind of look at what that means, right? So if this is the horizon and this is sunset again on Komohana. So at 6 p.m., we recognize that this, in fact, will be the final 120 degrees at sunset. You've got to reverse it. Muku, in fact, is when the sun, the moon, is so small that it's so close to the sun that you don't really see that particular moon. 
It's the opposite, in fact, of helo. Where helo would be here, chasing, sorry, the sun. In muku, yeah, actually the sun is um, kind of following the moon. And from muku, of course, you get larger and larger. And so ole kukahi is here. But actually, probably good, you know. But by the, the, the last of the oles, it's pretty much a 90 degrees opposite. So that's why the ole moons, or these moons, will rise in the night. So these are moons that come out in the night. And of course, the reversal, the last, God, the last ones which are uh, connected to uh, our gods, you have Mauli in reverse order, of course, Lono and Kane. So commonly, these moons here are moons, if you notice that, are just in front of the sun, right? So if you think about prior to the sun rising, prior to the sun rising here, these are moons that will be right in front of the sun. So these are, these moons are moons that rise in early, early morning, yeah, 3, 4, even 5 o'clock. And that's why we talk about Pokani in Hawaiian. Pokani represents the night of Kane, which is considered a very dark night. It's the night, in fact, that the moon doesn't rise until early, early morning. Yeah. So when we think about the moon phases, it's also important to think about, again, their positions, right? That we have the moon phases kind of move in this direction at sun, sunset. Yeah. That we think of the first third, the first Anahulu, is that the moon seems to be chasing after the sun. And it gets farther and farther away. It's like the sun is too fast for the moon. And eventually, the sun gets so far away that we hit the poi poi phase. When the moon, of course, is directly opposite the sun. Therefore, that's why it's so round. And then in the last uh, uh, phases of the so-called uh, Kaulana Mahina, is when the sun appears to be chasing after the moon. Yeah, whereby the moon will rise prior to sunrise. Yeah. So, in a nutshell, yeah, we think about the Kaulana Mahina, we should memorize not just the names of the phases, but also pay close attention to the so-called Kaulana, again, the position of the moon. With that, go forward. Aloha.